Let's get a YouTube and welcome to the house. I'm taking a break from Marathon and Cobra Kai just to bring you guys another market watch. The sacrifices I make around here. It's like it's my job or something. That being said, the first bit of news is not what's good, but we need to talk about it and you need to be aware of it for multiple reasons. Maximum Gold is seeing a huge delay. To our Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game partners, First and foremost, we wanted to thank you very much for your continued support for the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. As most of you are aware, this has been an unprecedented time for our brand and industry as a whole. We would not be where we are today without your continued support and partnership. As a result of the overwhelming support from the distributor partners, it has affected our ability to meet the current state calendar release for the upcoming release of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game Maximum Gold. The revised release date for the launch have been moved from October 9th, 2020 until Friday 13th, 2020. Why is that date such a big deal besides, I want my cards and I need them now? Well, it's going to line up right with Phantom Baby Rage just a week later, which also means stores are going to have to make budget decisions on how much Phantom Rage do I get in? How much gold series am I going to get in? How am I going to pay for all of this in two weeks? As well as you as the end consumer, how much Phantom Rage can I buy? Wait, what about maximum gold? This is a great set to keep sealed and we know Konami's bringing over the OCG rarity which has a risen gold foil on it and actually looks awesome it's the first time we can say that I think though this delay is to make sure it's not Toon Chaos 2.0 I may be giving props due early to Konami but I think it's so we don't see wide production issues with this so that they get it right the first time because look at how the actual card is designed it's different than anything they've done before and coming to US this distribution they have to be very careful when it's actually like a risen layer on the card so i'm hoping this prevents it from being toon chaos 2.0 you might want to budget earlier rather than later if you do want to get in on this product my suggestion is to still keep it sealed because every single first incarnation of a brand new gold series does extremely well long term on the market but i also have a feeling that they may want to one up maximum gold like put collector rares or something else next year so i would think about when i I would move it even if I'm keeping it sealed. That being said, yes, that's a very, very big deal and you want to keep your eyes on it. Let's move next to what's happening with Troll and Toad. I recently got a code What's Good 5 for 5% off over on Troll that also supports the channel directly and I did not know how many people internationally just rely on Troll and Toad for their cards. It was really eye-opening for me but another piece of good news is that now on their buy list here you can get a raised 5% on your entire buy list order to them either in cash or credit raising it to 30% trade in credit or an extra five percent in cash and why this is a big deal i want to show you i come to their buy list a lot to see what's huge in demand for them and right now that's verite anaconda even though it's going down a little bit on market and it creates an interesting situation see i used to use buy list a lot when i vended and it's a highly underutilized tool and when i blew up somebody's spot i was like yeah troll and toads buy list is great i got hate messages telling me to go die and stuff so that was ridiculous but hey Hey, now you can use my code to get 5% extra for those people that really didn't like me. I want to show you this though. Verite Anaconda's $21 here and over on TCG Player people are selling it for $29. Well, they're going to lose $350 on a bubble mailer and yes, you're still going to have to ship it to Troll but uh, starting with the fees on that full $29 actually, you take 13% in fees on TCG Player and then a 3.5 uh, loss on the bubble mailer and tracking because you're a mad lad if you're not shipping tracked on an order that's $25 or more, you see here at 21, well now that's really close already and you're going to get that juiced 5% on top of your order. All you got to do is add it to the notes on the buy list. They don't have an official system for it yet. So when you're sending to them, add what's good five to the notes, you're actually getting more than they are on a big spread of them because you're likely only to spell, sell one Verte Anaconda at a time. People are needing it for Dragoon. People are needing it to be, bring out the big bad boss. You could sell 12 of them if you have a stack and make better money than 
than if you were selling on TCG Player. Granted, you're not making feedback. You're also not going to get somebody who's like, I didn't get my order. So that's one way to use it. And another way is I like to see cards I wouldn't have thought about for Market Watch otherwise when looking at their hot buys. Even though they're this kind of bubble of a market on their own because sites are going to get weird demands, I didn't know this generic-ish draw engine was going up even for the reprint version to where Battles of Legend is almost worth what the originals are and both are very low on quantities. So looking at their buy list and just being on their site, sometimes you learn something, other times you can make actually pretty good sales. And now What's Good 5 works over on both the buy list and when you're buying cards from Troll and Toad and it supports the channel directly. Let's look at the Mega Tens real quick. There's not too much happening other than Dragoon is baby bumping up again. I could unfortunately see this heading towards $50 and the rest of the Tens are settling a bit. Borrowed Savage also doing a little slow creep towards $15 solid while the rest of everything else just becomes cheaper, has more quantities on market. The online marketplace has choked harder than ever and I think I underestimated that with the set. We did see Dragoon all the way down to $30 on the release hour but it has just gone up since and there just are not as many listings versus every card it's like one third the listings of most but you're seeing extravagance also fall into that range as people take three off the market in a time and they prefer this to the ultra rare the ultra rare is going to help pot of extravagance keep uh more copies total on market but i think this is better than the ultra rare and a lot of people are spending their money agreeing that way i mentioned this just last market watch triple tactics talent had several lower listings on the market they didn't use my tcg player link on the description down below costing them nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards they'd already be buying to buy it i would have definitely seen that bump and it is back towards 400 solid i think this does have a higher ceiling than ecclesia ecclesia was while waifu-ish is tied to a deck and the health of that deck, whereas this is going to flow in and out of formats in the future, much like Lightning Storm. It's a three of when you're running it, and it's a pretty darn good card right now to punish Gamma. Gaia has fallen out pretty quick, though. We don't see many Starlights actually fall like this. We look towards Eternity Code, and everything stayed treading water at around 200 plus, but this is falling out cover card of the set. It just shows not all starlight rares have that huge buff immunity to tread water at 200 but a lot of deep pockets are trying to make it stay that way so if you get in on the low maybe you'll see other people trying to buy it out towards 200 again in the future but they're also probably waiting for it to go lower so they actually make money versus fees and shipping and all that rise was shorted on release that means the starlights are less than almost any other starlights out there if you're playing the big boy market pay attention to that now talking about big boy market markets the Japanese have been coming into our market and taking a lot of cards off. This is no conspiracy theory. I've seen the actual data, trends, sales, and they're going after 10,000 dragons. And the other thing they cleared out was the World Championship Pack envelopes. And they're continuing to press into these really hard. I'm seeing big boy vendors willing to spend the 1250 on these envelopes when last year $250 was the highest price in the room when these just came out. You are making really good money on these if you're putting them up and selling them and they have just exponentially gone up in demand as more of the Japanese are interacting with the market again despite them not being able to use TCG cards over there. They want to collect, they want different versions versus what they have and they're looking over here. So 10,000 Dragon is winning the race big time versus you Utopia. Utopia for its astral version is relatively cheap in the OCG, especially compared to ours, and it continues to fall out. One of my few wrong calls of the year. I still think this is just so iconic. I think in a 10-year race, this should have been it, but early meddling in the market, along with that first early buyout as well, seems to be pushing 10,000 Dragon even further upward, away from 1,200 towards 1,300 as they get slurped from us. Next up, I wanted to talk about some retro formats. I mentioned this in in my ultimate buyout video that the monarchs were something that inspired me to even look around there mobius for uh, has an unlimit at 50 but the first ed is lowest around 150 and then you get to the dr3 version there's one surprisingly on market around 43 these tend to sell around 30 to 40 so that's a sane price on it to actually try to get a sales rate you see the market price is quote unquote 12 but that's because of how many more of the damaged and 
you know, white play copies are going to be selling. And then you see first edition set Monarchs are starting to be a little bit on the rise with only a couple even there for Mobius. So people are taking past formats so much more seriously. They're looking any and everywhere in the market for old stuff to make it disappear. Down all the way to first edition Monarchs, Thestalus Rise of uh, Destiny is actually still one of the cheapest old school sealed sets, but that's disappeared too when it comes to this ultimate rare the first editions wow they're around 72 not quite that double up into mobius i really do like this one but it, i think it's because soul of the duels is so much more expensive sealed than rise and people don't give rise a lot of respect that this is still around 75 half the price of that and it was more of a tech option in monarchs too not everybody played the stalos especially when you get to later formats like troop dupe monarch and we see the dr3 version of it dr3 has had a high quantity for a while is around $12, nowhere near the Mobius uh, listings there. Thestalos first edition is cheap, 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 around a dollar to two dollars if you want to get this. But again, when it comes to Monarch formats, this was not always mega played. What changed the game for Monarchs besides Caius is Ryza. Ryza's ultimate rare is definitely getting up there. The Unlimited at 60 and the first edition around 110 on. 120 and finally somebody who doesn't have a high rarity zaborg ancient sanctuary is back to his old day prices for first edition unlim still around seven but there's very few and you see as we head towards first editions 25 dollars. this is what people paid in the meta back in the day his ceiling was 30 if i recall people are paying the old school price on first ed ancient sanctuary zaborg going back to their monarch days it's just any and every format right now and i think as those get more popularized as more information spreads about past formats as more people actually want to play them you're going to see cheap variants which are nice you have duelist leagues tournament pack rare so many actually nice versions of the monarchs but when it comes down to the more expensive versions, they are disappearing, and they're disappearing fast. DR2 also was relatively high quantity on the market until recently, and now you see that going too. So the Monarchs, their cute little looks, they're definitely for it. Spicer Monarch, Lazaro Monarch, you have Rockenbach Monarch, you have so many ages, Cordonarch of Monarchs, and they, they go cross-format for a long time. Like, they're just going to keep being good for many old Yu-Gi-Oh! sets. I think that's why they're getting so many other looks besides the nostalgia and the I want my piece of history. Thank you for watching today's Market Watch. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like I've said many a time, use that TCG player link in the description down below, costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying. It's completely free to click, and when you're shopping for cards anyways, it supports the channel. And I'm really happy with how the Troll and Toad uh, is shaping up with What's Good 5. That's cool. And I guess I should mention, if you're hunting down Gold Series or Phantom Rage and budgeting early, What's Good 5 works on YBM2. Is that enough selling out? I think that's enough selling out. I'm gonna go back to cobra kai i i know it's it's been out for a while youtube series you should have been watching you're, you're a youtuber aren't you uh and my wife's even into it she's like shouting at certain parts of the show it's good they just you know i don't want to watch it give it a taste it's it's a, actually a pretty good time